Hello, and welcome to this episode of City Corner. We've got a lot of great information for you today. First, we're gonna talk about what men have to really get checked out. And we've got some great information for you on how to find some good jobs here in St. Louis. Come on back. here on City Corner, I'm Robin Boyce, and in the studios with me this morning is an awesome man who has done a lot of good work here in the St. Louis community, Mr. Mel V. Shahid, who is founder and president of the Empowerment Network. How are you doing, good Mr. Morning, Shahid? I'm good, so good happy to see you, and how's your brother, Anthony? He's doing excellent. Everything's doing going great. great. I see him good. out there continuing in the right. struggle and getting it done. Yes. Lots of good conversations going on around town with reference to some of the things that he's doing. Right. Uh, with reference to Ferguson and, and bringing St. Louis together. But well, we're here to talk about uh, the fact that this is Prostate Awareness Month. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to announce to the St. Louis community that September is National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. You know, this is the month that we at the Empowerment Network, we really work hard mm -hmm. uh, promoting awareness, you know, honoring survivorship and remembering those who have lost their lives to this disease called prostate cancer. We're also recognizing those who are fighting a reoccurrence of this disease. You just had a big celebration um, uh, concerning uh, people who are survivors, uh, making sure that you remember those. Tell us how that affair went. Was oh, it was an one? excellent mm -hmm. affair. It was well attended by over 350 men and women, and we honored some of the survivors in our uh, nationally acclaimed support group, we empowered those men with, uh, with hope uh, by honoring them and recognizing them because uh, my survivors have become the ambassadors for this disease in the St. Louis community, hands down, without a doubt. We have changed the conversation of prostate cancer by making it a conversation in the community. We engage in conversation. For years, prostate cancer was not even a whisper in the, in the community. Yeah. You, you heard nothing about this exactly. disease. But it took the men of the Empowerment Network, the prostate cancer survivors of our organization, mm -hmm. that took this conversation into the community through all our outreach programs yes. that we have. And now prostate cancer now is almost becoming a household word in the African-American community. Now, um, beforehand, I would see a lot of uh, folks from your group out at different affairs giving uh, out leaflets and pamphlets and those kinds of things. And, and, and men as well as women will be a little squirmish about even discussing the topic and, um, and also hearing stories about um, um, uh, wives saying that, well, their husband went for their annual checkup. And they found out they had prostate cancer or an uncle right. or a father and they didn't do anything about it. Well, and then a few years later, they're in a four stage right. and and that was just too much of a story that I continuously heard. Are we seeing less and less of that nowadays? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So let me give a big shout out to all the beautiful sisters, the mothers, the wives, our caregivers that have given us a gentle push into the doctor's office, which has really helped to save many of the lives of men in our support group. Yes, the conversation has changed. Uh, the, and, and we have built an army around this disease, now all empowering men to go get tested. Right. It's and so that's important. the message for this month, Rob. Get tested. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging men during this, this great month of September to go take that simple blood test. It's just a simple blood test. Okay. And it's that simple blood test that can save their lives. So the, it's a blood test they can take when they're getting an annual or they can go get it checked out immediately and see what's going on if they, they have some concerns and that test should be able to tell them what's going on? Right, it's a great indicator. It's, okay. a great, it's, a, okay. it's a great indicator. There is no guarantees, but it's a great indicator. They should be taking that test annually. Yes. And they should be taking a physical annually. 
they should be going to the doctors. The men are not going to the doctors. So we're encouraging men to do that. They need to do it for themselves and they need to do it for their families. Right, that is something I would love to see more. <clears throat> there are some organizations, one that I work for as well, the city of St. Louis, where they really push the free mam mammograms for right. women, which I think is awesome. On right. an annual basis, we get free mams. The big bus comes out, it's really awesome. Uh, it's painless and we, we find out what's going on. And that has been going on for several years now with the city. I'd like to see that with prostate uh, testing. That, right. that really ne that needs to be pushed in yeah. some kind of way where men are um, given the opportunity to get tested to see what's going on. Yeah, well men's health is equally as important. Yes. You know, men, we are the providers, the protectors, the maintainers of our home and our families, mm -hmm. and we need healthy men to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we need healthy men to be in the lives of their families. So, we, like, once again, we're encouraging men during this great month, September National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, to get tested. Tell us a lot about what you do with the Empowerment Network. What are some of the things that you do to help men get through well, this I'm a, whole Well, I'm process? a prostate cancer advocate. You know, I advocate for a disease called prostate cancer, encouraging men in the community to get tested, you know, and we have developed great programs, outreach programs. Uh, we have a speakers bureau of men who go out in the community. Those are the men that you see at the health fairs, yes. setting up information tables. We work along with great partners like St. Louis University Cancer Center, okay. and I got to really salute the Betty Jane Care People's Health Center. These Excellent. are great partners that have worked along with the Empowerment Network, helping to save the lives of men in our community. Most definitely. So you are talking constantly with people and helping them get to the next level. Now, you also have people that are, can go into the churches and talk? Oh, yeah, most definitely. We started our Save and, our, and, save and Empower our Men's Church Tour, mm -hmm. and we go into the church testing on a Sunday morning. Wow. When the Reverend is preaching, we're testing, because you got to get men where they're at. Right. You got to find out where they're at and go to them. We, now, so we took it to the community. Right, right. What's the response like? What kind of response are you getting from the men? Well, we get great responses from the men, mm -hmm. you know. And, 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 and you know what, Robin? Once they get tested, you know, they get that sense of confidence. Okay. Then, and they'll say, that wasn't so bad, I thought. Now I think I'll go get my eyes examined. Now I think I'll go get my teeth checked. Mm -hmm. Some of those things that they had been lacking on, now, the PSA test gives them the courage now to really look at overall health and wellness of their bodies. Tell us what happens when a man finds out that there may be a prostate issue. What, what is going through an individual's mind at that point? Well, he becomes shell-shocked. You know, he becomes, uh, he don't want to talk about it. Men go into hiding. Uh, and that's the reason why they need support. They need support. They need support to empower their spirit. The health of the human spirit needs to be empowered, you know, with some with love. And that's what our support group offers. We offer love to those men. We offer support to those men. And when they see survivors like themselves, then they too know that they can survive. Real manhood knows, real men know and understand that, that this disease don't define them. You know, my disease did not define me as a man. I am a man, you know, and I thank Almighty God that he has healed my body so that I can advocate and help someone else. So when, when you're diagnosed, um, your group can then do what? Do you have people who are there for counseling? Do you have people who can direct you toward a good urologist or a doctor that can help them through the process? What, what does the Empowerment Network the do? The Empowerment there? Network does all the above. You know, we advocate, uh, we have a support group, we have three doctors on our board of directors working along with the organization. We have a psychotherapist because of the psychological and the emotional side effects that men have from dealing with the big C word. Cancer is the most feared word in seven different languages. So when you say cancer, Robin, mm -hmm. I guarantee you can, get, you can get the attention of anyone. And when a man gets diagnosed with cancer, the family, right. you know, it affects the family, not just the man, let's talk about the family. Mm -hmm. It affects the entire family. Mm -hmm. So once again, we got to encourage men to get tested 
And if they are diagnosed, we say early detection is the best protection. You also, uh, in the fundraising mode as well, always looking for those donations that can help out because you put together a nice kit right. for, for men, especially if they decide to have an operation to um, work on their prostate cancer. They need to go home with some things. Right. And so tell us about those kits you put well, together. Well, we put together what we call an after-surgery kit. When men are diagnosed with prostate cancer, they will go home with a catheter on. So our prayer team is at the hospital. We're there to pray with those men. Prayer and, team? Well, we have a prayer team that goes into the hospitals on the morning of, those, on the morning of surgery. We pray along with those men awesome. to give them that spiritual upliftment. But we come bearing a gift. You know, we come bearing a gift, and it's called our after-surgery kit. And those some, the, in that kit are some hygiene items that men will need when they go home. Mm -hmm. Many of our survivors are bachelors, and they're okay. single men. Right. So when they go home, they go home to an empty home. And that kit is what, what we call a little starter kit because that catheter will be on for maybe a week or two. Okay. So he, he can't get up and run to the drugstore. Mm -hmm. So that kit has the items that he will need so that he won't have to do that. Great. Now, with reference to caregivers, how patient or what kind of help should those caregivers get when dealing with this kind of a, of a disease? Well, I think the number one, you said it, patience. You know, I tell the family members that, I tell the survivors that, and the wives, they have to be patient because of the psychological and emotional, you know, trauma that a man goes through when he's diagnosed with prostate cancer. Love, let's talk about love a little bit. Love is a healing component that can heal the mind, the body, and mm -hmm. the soul of mm -hmm. a man. And when that injection of love is get, given to him, then you will see him heal faster. You know, based on statistics, when men are diagnosed with prostate cancer, when they have a loving caregiver or a loving family, they seem to heal a lot faster than when they go home alone. I often say, this is not a journey to be traveled alone. That, that's really good to hear that. Um, one really good question. How soon should men start getting tested? I think based on American Cancer Society statistics, they should be tested by 45. Okay. They should be tested by 45. We're seeing prostate cancer as early. We have seen this as, as early as the age of 35. African-American men have the highest incidence of prostate cancer of any other ethnic group. I think based on the numbers, one in seven African-American men will be diagnosed. We're two times more likely to die from this disease. Is that because of lack of health care or is there something? Well, there is risk factors, age, okay. family okay. history, diet. But to say one thing causes it, we don't know. Wow. That's, uh, and, and it's, wow, those are some stats that are really shocking and kind of take you, set you back a little bit. Well, I hope people really got an opportunity to learn more about prostate cancer. I've had you on before. I want you to come on back right. again because we got to continue to talk about this. Thank, thank and you. And make sure that guys get checked get, out. Get tested. Get tested. That's the get message, tested. get tested. Get tested. I thank you so much, Ms. Melby, so much for thank coming you. in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in and sitting down and talking with us about prostate cancer. I hope our uh, audience out there is really learning something. We'll be right back with some great opportunities for you to find work here in the St. Louis area. There's no excuse. the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome, innovators, dreamers, pioneers of the 21st century. We've been expecting you to come discover your dreams and make your ideas take flight. Just like so many explorers that came before you. Welcome to the hub of opportunity. Welcome to St. Louis. Always.
always exploring. Welcome back to City Corner. I'm Robin Boyce, and in the studio with me right now is Ms. Frederica McClown, who is co-manager of the Young Adult Division, and Carlos Ball, who is executive liaison, 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 liaison for Slate, which is the St. Louis Agency on Training and Employment. Mm -hmm. Now, I sit here looking at you young people. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say this. Slate was created before y'all were born. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, yes, ma yes, ma I'm going, these little babies up here, oh my God, and now you all are down there running it, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> thank you. This is great. Slate has been around for uh, many, many years mm -hmm. now. I mm -hmm. remember when it was created, and I worked there uh, on the, in the summer times as mm -hmm. uh, well, I was a teacher with the St. Louis Public School System, and of course, we had summer jobs. And that slate was my deal. And mm -hmm. I used to run a crew of kids, cleaning up or working in different places. So tell us about Slate and some of the great things you all are doing now. Well, Slate is doing some awesome things. Uh, one of the main things we're working on now is Workforce Wednesdays. So every Wednesday, we are encouraging people to come down and get a job. Our tagline this year is connecting real people with real jobs. And that's something that we're focusing heavily on. Um, it has been proven that there's a direct correlation um, in our community of crime and unemployment. So our goal is to get people into jobs so they can maximize their time, gain the skills that they need to be successful, uh, gain the education that they need to be successful, and put them in a job to put them on their road to prosperity. So that's, that's one great. of our main things we're working on now. Great. Now when people come down and uh, get ready for the jobs, what are some of the processes that they have to go through? And actually talk to them how they should look what they should uh, uh, what should they be ready to do is there something they need to bring with them talk to us about that um, well if you if you do have your ID we want you to come down with your okay. ID mm -hmm. um, and the like, ID would be what driver's license driver's or state license ID or yes ma'am okay um, if you have that make sure you bring that down with you so that we can get you into the system we can get you registered right. um, and like Freddie was talking about workforce Wednesday um, we would like you to come with a resume so that we can either print it out. Okay. But if you don't have one, then that's not a problem because we will set you up with one of our team members to help you create a resume. Excellent. So, um, yeah, so those are just some of the things we would like you to have when you come down. That's mm -hmm. great. Some of the jobs that are available or that you all try to place folks in, tell us about some of them. We have jobs in all kinds of areas. Those areas could include anything from healthcare, anything from uh, information technology, um, social work. We have various fields. So construction. Each construction mm -hmm. is also, we have construction placement programs as well. Uh, so any industry that you could think of, anything from beginning level, mid level, and professional. Um, jobs we have everything so if you are interested we definitely encourage you to come down and see us um, today specifically we have uh, charter charter is interviewing today along with slate we're looking to hire some case managers some job coaches some education mentors so whatever that looks like for you come down and see us we highly encourage you um, and even if we don't have that company there that day um, every Wednesday, this is something that we do. We're there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. because we know um, that uh, the average, we can't save a life between the hours of 9 and 5 or 8 to 4. So we have to expand our services to be able to meet our community where they are and give them the services that so they you, need. you have after hour yes. time? Oh, great. Yes. So we are there That's after new. hours That's totally as new. well. It Did is totally that. new. Okay. Okay. Yes, so you, and Slate is now located at 15 20 Market Street. Mm -hmm. We call it City Hall West. Yes. That was actually the old Abrams building. Mm -hmm. It was no government building where the FBI was and the Agriculture Department many, many years ago. Um, the city of St. Louis bought it and uh, they put Slate there on the third floor. Mm -hmm. okay. Room 3050 yeah. is our room. So, Great. yes. Great. You all always look like you're so busy in there. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, folks are in and out. We're I see out, young yeah. people coming in. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome that they know exactly where they can go to find work. Mm -hmm. Now, the young people who are coming in, are there some kids that come in and just are just not ready yet and, and you help them get there? Yes. Or, tell me about that process. 
So we do a lot of job readiness training to make sure that especially our young adults are ready and prepared to maneuver the workforce. We do a lot of skills training. We have various programs um, that prepare our youth um, wherever they are. We have some educational programs mm -hmm. and Carlos can speak to our nation's only 24 hour workforce high school where our students can come in if it's 3 a.m. in the morning and they are looking to get their high school diploma that they can come in and work on their high school diploma. So 3 a.m. 3 a.m. So yes, why are you out partying? Yes. <laughs> yes and you know that you need a job yes, so you can get to the next party. Yes, ma'am. You can actually go down a slate. Yes. And actually get your resume together, get some training or understand what you need to do to move to the next level. Yes, ma'am. And as um, also what Freddie said, as far as even the job readiness training, we go a step further, even with um, some of the youth, like you said, who come in that mm -hmm. just aren't simply there yet. We right. also um, work with them with uh, behavior modification, mm -hmm. um, teach them how to deal with um, certain situations, conflict resolution, um, decision making skills. And that's part of what we do um, as far as like our education mentors who are also 24 hour mentors as well. So Slate has taken on a whole holistic approach mm -hmm. yes, to job readiness mm -hmm. and getting people into jobs. It's, it's, it's a, a different uh, perspective on when it started. It was about summer jobs only. Mm -hmm. Were you working with year round situations now? Yes, yes year round situations. So we have our students all year round in the 24 hour high, uh, workforce high school. Um, we also have the Youth Build St. Louis City program. I like that, Workforce High School. Workforce High learning. School is the nation's only 24 hour high school. Um, we also have the Youth Build St. Louis City program and we're rolling out some new programs this year to help our students um, with a special focus on those who are offenders and high school dropouts and helping them Excellent. obtain their high school equivalency, gain a skill in construction and get out there in the workforce and make it happen. So. We are fully dedicated to making sure that we meet the needs of our community. See, now I had no idea, and I said at the top of the show, there's no excuse. Mm -hmm. But there's no excuse. There's no excuse. So you're taking care of folks who may have gotten in a little trouble, yep. serve some time, mm -hmm. who are getting out, mm -hmm. who need to get some training so that they can continue to move mm -hmm. on. And you're helping young people who basically are, you know, not quite ready yet, or they mm -hmm. think they want to work, mm -hmm. but you're getting them in there, too. We're getting them in there, yeah. too. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that go on uh, within the place, when the, a person comes in and starts getting processed, what are some of the steps that you take them through? So what they will do, once they'll come, in, come into Slate, mm -hmm. they'll actually be greeted um, at the welcome um, desk, um, and they'll meet one of our team members. Our team members will get them signed in, get them a badge. Um, then they'll move over to the actual front desk where they will be registered into the system. Mm -hmm. And from there, they'll be moved to another team member who will assist them with whatever services they need. Because um, I also want to say that not everyone that we deal with is, uh, is young adults. Mm -hmm. we, have, right. we deal with everyone, you okay, know. Um, so you have adults as well. Yes, ma'am. So we, 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 we take them from there. Once they get uh, registered into the system, we see what services they need, um, whether that be unemployment, uh, resume building, finding different trainings, and, um, finding somewhere that they are, because we are trying to get like gain their, not their high school diploma, but their high set, which is their GED. So mm -hmm. we have people who are mm -hmm. over the ages that go over our programs for the young adults and we sure, we're still able to service them too. Now do people come to you, they probably have a college degree and they're just trying to find how, a hard time trying to find mm -hmm. work in St. Louis? Yes. What do you do for those We folks? do. So um, what we do along those lines is, like Carlos said, once they're greeted at our welcome desk and we kind of do a vetting process to see which sure. of our programs works best for them because we have all kinds of different programs that are tailored to meet the needs of everyone. So if we have someone who has just graduated from college College, we may refer them to the WIOA Out of School program, which is one of our programs where they come in and they work with that career specialist to help them find a job in that particular field. If they already have a resume, just kind of going in and developing that resume for them and tailoring it specifically to that industry. Um, if it's job readiness training that they need, sometimes we stop out of our day and sit down and do a full job readiness training with that particular youth, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. Um, we also have a database of different agencies and resources mm -hmm. that we can point those youth in the direction of. So our goal, youth or um, adult, mm -hmm. our goal is to kind of walk them step through step 
um, through that process and ensure sure. that they get that job and that they maintain that job mm -hmm. once they get it. I want to ask you about the maintaining. What are the success rates looking like for you all at this point, the folks that you're getting out there in the workforce? What are the success rates looking like? They look very good for us right now, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's so positive because we take a very case management standpoint. Like Carlos said, we have the 24-hour education mentors, and we have those mentors who constantly follow them weekly to make sure that they're doing well. Um, some we follow closer than weekly. Sometimes we call every day to check how was your day at the job today right. or were there any conflicts or how we could have resolved those situations differently. Okay. We are very hands-on at this point in ensuring ensuring that they maintain that employment once we once they get it and then we also follow them for a year afterwards um, and if there comes mm. a point where they may lose their job then our job again is to figure out why fix that problem and help them find something else specifically that meets their needs. Now mm -hmm. you said you were looking for people to work with Slate to help mm -hmm. in those areas and now you're looking for what counselors? For we're looking more for job coaches mm -hmm. um, slash career specialists. That's what we call them now. We're looking for education mentors. So those 24 hour people that when our young adults are in those situations and they need somebody to talk to, that they can call that person and that person can come right to wherever they are and help them get out of that situation and help them get into something more positive. So we're looking for those that street outreach team to go okay. in and, and help them and Make it happen. Excellent. For them. Does, do these people need to have a certain kind of background in social work or education or what? Do, what are you all looking for? No, they just have to have the passion and the drive to want to help the youth. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, myself, now that I am the executive liaison, yes. I've been a, the education mentor, and I'll always be a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, previously Excellent. the coordinator of Workforce High School. And what that looks like for them, they just need to have a passion to want to work with the youth. And like I say, most of the time it's not really a job it's a lifestyle yes. you have to have an actual passion and drive for this um because like she said you never know you may get those one two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. um phone calls where they maybe not even need you to come right to where they are they just need you to talk to them okay um you have to be open for that mm -hmm. and as i say my phone never is off Right. So um, if someone needs me, I'm going to do my best to either assist you mm -hmm. right then and there mm -hmm. or call one of the team members because we all connect all the there. time. Yes, ma'am. Slate has really grown up. Oh, my God. And so have you all. And unbelievable. <laughs> I'm telling you, Slate was created before these babies were born. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you both for coming on. Thank and tell so Dr. Much. Alice Price, congratulations to her getting a job. I saw Alice get her start. Yes. I'm so proud of her. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you so much for joining us for This City Corner. We'll see you the next time when we're going to have some really good information. Talk to you soon. I'm Robin Boyce. Oh,